The Raiders are going primetime Monday night football coming up this Monday night going up against the Kansas City Chiefs. Welcome in everybody to the Silver and Black Show. Amber Theo Harris along with my buddy Eric Allen to break it down for you. And Eric, this is a Chiefs team that is three and one. They have beaten some very good teams, yeah. including just recently the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that has a very good defense. Yeah, much respect for this Chiefs football team. We thought they were going to fall off a little bit, right? You know, yeah. with all the changes this year. But here's this guy, one of a kind, right? I was trying to kind of figure out who he reminds me of, and I got to go all the way back to like Roger Stallback or somebody, you know I mean? <laughs> He's so unique, gets it done in so many ways. Uh, happy to see that this football team with Andy Reid, who's a good friend of mine, is rolling, but not on Monday night. They're not gonna be on rolling against us. They're not going to be rolling against us. Amber. And everybody said, what are they going to do without Tyreek Hill, where they just put up 41 <laughs> points against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers yeah. that has a very good front seven. And so now it is a test for the Raiders because there have been some very good players on this Chiefs team yes. without Tyreek Hill. Of course, right. they still have Travis Kelsey, oh, man. who's had 27 receptions, <laughs> leading tight ends, 324 yards. Don't sleep on Clyde Edwards. No, Allaire. I'm not He sleeping. is a guy that can catch the football. Yes, out All the of their field. running backs. The running backs and their tight ends right now. Very versatile. They're their and leading you know receivers. What? And they do an outstanding job of kind of taking over, right? Especially on those broken plays. And Kelsey is just so good. I mean, his lateral movement, the way he gets it done, his route running, and then the relationship between him and Mahomes just seems like they're brothers from another mother. Yeah, they've been together a long time. <laughs> they've done a lot of damage. Yeah. And it, it all goes through number 15. Yeah. It starts and ends with being able to contain Patrick Mahomes. And uh, that's not easy to do no, because it's nobody not. is better outside of the pocket of extending plays Whew. than Patrick Mahomes. Man, one of the best all time, right? When we start talking about uh, him outside the pocket, making plays for his football team, the scramble drills, all that stuff, it is incredible what he's been able to accomplish. We're going to show you here a little bit about what it's like to really take uh, take a shot at the scramble drill. And obviously, the scramble drill uh, is going to come later. But right now, West Coast offense, we've got what we call a snag route. It's going to be a route right here on the front side. You're going to get the back out to the flat, going to get a curl. Then we're going to get a seven. On the back side, Juju Smith's supposed to run that dig route. Then Kelsey's going to clear out. That's the way the route is supposed to be, right? Supposed to. Yeah, it's supposed to be. But look at this right here. He's looking at Juju. But you know what? You know who's looking at him? A safety and a linebacker. Look at him. Great job doing the coverage. Here's where the chaos begins. Scramble drill. So these receivers know, you know what? My man's scrambling. I need to get to a place where I can get open. So I'm going to spin. I'm going to go. And again, defensively, you got to know the rules, right? Push him out of bounds. We out. can do that when he's outside the pocket. We don't get it done. And again, Patrick Mahomes makes magic. It's not going to happen against us because we know the rules, right? <laughs> We're going to get those guys out of bounds, know the rules. And again, look at the arm angle. But if it helps you, you have to know the rules on defense. Get those guys out of bounds, hit them, bump them a little bit. Up front, obviously, you want to get a sack, right? If yeah. you're a Big Max or, or some of our other players. But then it's so important to understand the rules on these scramble drills because we're going to see it probably four or five times a game. And that's scripted somewhat. That chaos <laughs> yeah, is actually right. scripted. They yes. practice that, those scramble drills. They and that's do. why they're very successful. Like you said, know the rules. Also, you can get very handsy once Ooh, he's outside get the pocket. Amber, get physical. Get, get him physical. out of bounds. Because if you get the receivers out of bounds, they can't come back in and get a, and be the receiver. And yep. then you, as a defender, can come and help somewhere. Go find somebody else. That's right. All right, here's Patrick Mahomes on Facing the Raiders. Yeah, you just know you know it's going to be a battle every single time. Um, it's going to be both teams trying to play their best football um, it's a true rivalry. Um, we, we know that you, it doesn't matter what the records are. Uh, you're going to go out there and play. It's going to be a dogfight. Um, and they had a great football team. I mean, their record, they, they don't have the, the best record, but every game they've been in the game or been leading the game at, at certain points. So we understand it's going to be a great challenge for us. Um, and uh, especially Monday night at Arrowhead, we want to go out there and find a way to win. So even though he's very difficult to get to, yeah. he is not untouchable. The Tampa Bay right. Buccaneers did a nice job of pressuring Patrick Mahomes. Six quarterback hits. They had three sacks. Is this an opportunity for the Raiders' front seven to get some pressure? And if so, how do they do it? Yeah, be, be kind of mindful of what you're doing. To go, yeah. <laughs> go on, yeah. Yeah. Don't just be blitzing all the time. Yeah. Don't just be yeah. going blitzing this guy because yeah. he does a great job, as we just saw, outside the pocket. And again, when we're talking about that pressure, you want to hopefully get pressure with four. And that's kind of what you want to do. So you can have a little more zone concepts. But when you do pressuring, make sure you're detailed and understand that you got to give a little disguise. So I'm talking about maybe Abram sneaking in on the left, and then he backs out the snap of the ball. And then as we saw last week, Hobbs coming in from the right side, yeah. getting a sack. So again, Patrick Graham is great at this, too doing an outstanding job of disguising, giving a little bit here, taking a little bit away, showing you different looks, 
and Mahomes have seen them all, but it's the timing of the blitzes that are so important yeah. with our defense. Uh, one of the things that the Raiders defense is going to have to do a lot better is play better red zone defense. Yeah. Uh, right now, the Chiefs red zone offense, top four in the NFL. How do you defend Patrick Mahomes inside the red zone? We did see yeah. you got to push those, push him out of bounds. <laughs> yeah, right? you, those receivers. You saw that. What else? How does it change, though? Amber, the first thing, don't let him down there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right? that, it's simple. Don't, it's not don't hard. Don't let him down there. Okay. But it's so important that this football team has an identity of physical nature. Don't let them just be able to hand the ball off, run the screens. Be mindful of the screen game. Force them into making critical and, and really difficult throws, accuracy throws, keep Mahomes uh, in the pocket. So it's a kind of a three level thing. Up front, keep them in the pocket or sacking. Second level, make sure you understand the check downs and the screens. And then on the back end, man, really rally to the football if it's up in the air because you want to get some tips, you want to get some overthrows, get some interceptions. Yeah, 73% of the time they score a touchdown in the red zone. That's <laughs> tough to defend. Coming up next, how will Coach McDaniels handle this offense? How do you attack that defense? That's coming up next right here on the Silver and Black Show. The Silver and Black Show is brought to you by Cox, proud partner of the Las Vegas Raiders. Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, nonstop flights. Book now only at Allegiant.com. 1800, the best taste in tequila and official partner of the Raiders. Adam's leading receiver, five grabs, 60 yards for the Raiders. Hand off to Jacobs, cuts back inside, spins away from Griffin at the 40, off the tackle 45, cross midfield, Jacobs at the 30, 25-20, and Stearns rides into the turf down inside the red zone. Josh Jacobs gets a congratulations from Max Crosby, because that could have been broken down for a two-yard gain. Instead, it goes for 32. We have to play a complimentary game. Uh, we have to somehow, some way, get control of the game, which means we have to play well early. Uh, they've had a couple games where they've been up 20 points in the second quarter, and you know then it, the game becomes really a passing game, you know, for the offense. So um, we we can't allow that to happen. Uh, we got to be ready to go right from the opening kickoff, and we have to jump in. We're not dipping our toe in the water. Uh, try to gain some control of the game, some control of the line of scrimmage. Uh, and then force them to play both our run game and our pass game as we go throughout the course of the game. Josh McDaniels talking about going up against the Kansas City yes. Chiefs number one ranked rush defense in the NFL. Welcome back to the Silver and Black Show. A little bit of a misleading yes. stat. Uh, not a lot of teams have tried to run often on them, but still when they have, they have limited uh, these top rushers in the NFL. Take a yeah. look at what this Chiefs defense has done. They held James Conner to just 26 yards on 10 attempts. Austin yeah. Eckler, that's a bad man yeah, right bad. there. Austin Eckler's a bad dude. He only had so 39. So Jonathan, Jonathan Leonard, Fournette, Amber, context, right? And, and our coach, Josh, kind of let us in on a little bit. When you're up so much in a team, you force a team to throw the ball and forget the run. So exactly. that's, kinda, that, that's the context we're working with right here. So it's complimentary football. That's kind of what we want to do here. So teams don't want the Chiefs to get out, get a turnover early, get a score, then come back, get another score. You're down 14-0. You can't afford to run the football. Yeah. Just so like that's the why it's in the situation the other day. Mm -hmm. Leonard Fournette could have been sitting on the bench because they had to come back. And that's a situation we don't want to be in. We want to take the fight to them. So when we come out early and hit them in the mouth, then let's see their numbers after our game. We hit them in the mouth our first two or three drives. But again, context in all of this right now, Amber. So that's the important issue about those numbers. Yes. The numbers are good, but it's all about context. If you start at the football game and you have to catch up your 10, 14 points down, you're not going to be able to run the football. And just as you heard our coach talk about, that's not going to be this way. This week on Monday Night Football, we're going to be out, hit them right in the mouth early on, so we don't have to worry about all that stuff. Yeah, so I was going to say, what are the Chiefs, <laughs> what are the Chiefs uh, interior linemen doing, man? They're not doing anything. It's Patrick right. Mahomes that's scoring the points, that's right. getting ahead. That's right. And then the other teams are forced to throw the football. Yep. So that all makes sense. But the one thing that the Chiefs defense is doing, right, their red zone defense uh, has, excuse me, one thing they're not doing, right, is they've been allowing touchdowns. Yes. Inside the red zone, they have been allowing a touchdown 80% of the time. Man, now, that, <laughs> the Raiders, though, have not been good Last in the red week, zone. Uh, two weeks ago, we're two for six. Last week, as you pointed out, we're two for five in the red zone. 
man, we got to get it done. And what do you think the, the, the issue is? Running Run. the football on first and second down. We looked at our stats, and our team has only run the ball in the red zone twice on, on second, second down. down. Come on. Come on. We got Josh who's heated up, ready to roll. We got to be more efficient in the running game. Obviously, first and second down could be a huge advantage for us because two things. Josh is running with a great sense of spirit. He's explosive, running well. But not only that, guard to center to guard, playing really well in the running game right now for our football team. Andre James back. Of course, Dylan credit. Parham, yeah, playing well. And Alex. So again, those players are playing really well. And when you're running the football as a defensive player, Early in the game, you get tired of tackling guys. You yeah. know, so I'm in the huddle talking into my lineman. Hey man, you gotta bring these dudes down. I don't wanna tackle this guy, you know. Guy's 200 pounds running at me. So again, it's really an opportunity to really run the ball early on first and second down, and then third down, obviously, throwing situations. Now you can kind of devise some stuff to get Devontae Adams or Waller open. Yeah, whenever you run the football, you have to account for the running game. It's going to yes. open up the passing game. And the good news for the passing game, Hunter Renfro is going to be nice. back after missing two games. So this will be the first time we have Hunter Ooh. out there. We have Devontae Adams and Darren Waller, the yeah. three amigos there, are yeah. going to be out there together since week two. Uh, I tell you, this is perfect timing for this football team to get uh, their three dominant positional receivers ready to play. Plus, Mac Hollins is playing really big, right? So now you have four guys you can get the ball to. So if you're going to double Wall, if you're going to double Devontae, Hunter with his great, with just his route running in the red zone has been terrific. Uh, and then you have Hollins who can kind of go up and get the ball. So you have so many options after you establish the running game, yeah. you can add all these things. What are they going to do? After you establish a running game, you bring that safety down to the box. They have to make a choice. Now you're dictating as an offense, who are you going to cover? I can see what you're trying to do, who you're trying to double, and then go to the one-on-one. -on -one. And at times, forget it. I don't care how many guys run Devontae. I'm going to give him a chance to go get it. It's a 40-inch vertical. Just yeah. throw it up in the air. Just and throw the it up. <laughs> just throw yeah. it up. It just it's just like, like having a forward. Yeah. You know? It's like having a basketball <laughs> forward. Just yeah. throw it up to that power right. forward and let him come down For with sure. it. In the red zone. All right, coming up next, we sit down with Josh Jacobs. The man is on a mission. He has been running the football, and when they do, the Raiders win. Here with Raiders running back Josh Jacobs. And uh, Josh, I have to say, happy Filipino American History Month. It's October. A lot of people don't know that on your father's side, a strong Filipino heritage. How much is the Filipino culture a part of your identity? I knew you wore the flag on your helmet. Yeah, uh, so I mean, I got the star tatted on me. I mean, growing up, my grandma, she really didn't speak English too much. Um, so she kind of like taught me like the culture where, when it came to like the food and, and things like that. And um, when she passed, my dad kind of like carried the tradition on. So that's kind of where I could just like, it's almost like paying homage to her for me. It's such a loving culture, such a family oriented yeah. culture as well. And you called your dad in a Super Bowl commercial. I saw you, you called your dad a superhero. And you've been very open about your family, uh, what they went through experiencing homelessness at one point in your life. How did your dad help shape your work ethic that now you use in the NFL? Yeah, I mean, I would definitely say my dad, uh, Taught me that like, you know taking care of five kids um, um, right. on his own and then just making it happen, um, but also like teaching me even when I had highs and success and stuff to always you know be humble and take it for what it is, but also know that things come and go and that you also need to keep grinding. So he's kind of the guy that kind of just kept me grounded throughout everything really in life, whether it was like off the field problems, on the field problems, whatever. Like he was always the, the one for me. You, you said you're the middle of five children, right? Do you have any middle child syndrome? You're a showman. Is that why you like to go nah. off on the, on the football <laughs> field? You got to get the attention? No, nah, I feel like I feel like me being the middle child, I was the one that like really just got to do whatever I wanted. <laughs> like everybody they ignored else, you? Yeah, they weren't worried about me. I got to do whatever I wanted. <laughs> I love it. And, and now you're doing whatever you want to do out on that field. You are a man that is running with a purpose. You're averaging just under five yards per carry. What is that purpose this year? Uh, to me, when I came in this off season, um, I, I lost some weight. I came in and I told everybody, like, I feel like this is the year. I seen the team that we was putting together. Um, I, I seen the coaching staff and things like that. And I was just like, 
if not if not now, then when, you know? And um, man, we got a special group of guys. Um, we came in collectively when we first came in. Uh, I talked with the offensive line and just about what we wanted to accomplish this year and what we wanted to get to. Um, so a lot of the guys, we kind of just got a similar mindset. I feel like my job as a running back is, you know, to set the tone. And um, that's all I try to do day in and day out. Uh, set the tone, you know, for, for the guys and also make them right. You know, when they, when they have a bus here or there, um, just make them right. Cause you know, I can't really do nothing without them. So it's, it's been a fun year. You're third in the league in yards after contact. That's what's so fun about watching you run. It's almost like when someone tries to tackle you, that's when the fun gets started. <laughs> do you just go into a different gear when you feel that first hit? I definitely need that first hit. Cause like if I run and I go out of bounds or something, it just, I still feel a little off. I definitely need that first hit, but really what it what for me is like once I hear the other other side like getting hyped or they you know they talking a little bit, that's kind of what get me going. I'd be like, all right, it's 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 time now. Yeah, they can just take your shirt, whatever they <laughs> yeah, want, I'm just like, rip it off. <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. It, it really is fun to watch. Um, but now you're going up against the Chiefs, and the Chiefs have the number one run defense in the NFL. A little skewed when you look that they haven't been run on a lot. Yeah. But what do they do so well? You've had a chance to watch them on on film. I mean, you, I mean, you look at their front. Their front is their front is legit. You know, the the from the defensive line to the linebackers, they they play gaps real good. Um, they're good with their hands. They're physical, um, and they bring it. You know, so. It's gonna be a fun matchup. I mean, it's, it's always, when you see the Chiefs, for me, I'll, it's always one I circle on my calendar, um, just because I know it's gonna be a big one every time. I don't know if you know this, you're gonna be a part of the defensive effort, because if you're on the field with the, hit, the ball in your hand, <laughs> Patrick Mahomes is not gonna be on the field with the ball in his hand. Do you feel an obligation to sustain those drives, especially when you're going up against a, an offense like the Chiefs? I mean, yeah, I mean, if you think about just how incredible of a, of a player that guy is, man, I mean, you watch him make plays and you you just think of like, man, that's stuff that you only see in Little League, you know, like crazy, crazy things. So as us, obviously as an offense, we we want to score points um, as, as many as possible. But I, I definitely think that time of possession is definitely going to be big in this game. When you have 15 carries or more, the Raiders are seven and two since 2021. Mm. Is it OK for an offense to be a run first offense in 2022 in this world of running back by committee is that permitted i mean you know this is a pass happy league now i mean but to win games especially the big ones um especially to go deep in the playoffs and stuff you got to be able to search your dominance and um the only way by doing that is running the ball so i think that those games we probably was trying to do that so it's be fun, interesting to see how we how we go uh, through the rest of the year. The man knows how to win in the playoffs. <laughs> that is old school football. No, you pound the real. football, you play defense. That's how you win a Super Bowl. Josh, it's so much fun to watch you out there this year. Continued success I against the Chiefs. It, man. Thank you. <laughs> the Silver and Black Show has been brought to you by Cox, proud partner of the Las Vegas Raiders. Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, non-stop flights. Book now only at Allegiant.com. Chevron with Techron gives you unbeatable cleaning and mileage. Chevron, together ahead. You know, he's a phenomenal football mind. I mean, he's sharp, sharp as deck. And, and so, um, and he's been doing it a long time. So you kind of know, you, you have evidence of what he likes to do matter of being able to stop it you know that's a, that's a challenge and and he does a great job of rotating plays and players and putting people in good spots so um he's a sharp sharp guy though Coach Andy Reid showing some respect to Josh McDaniels as yep. they get ready to face off on Monday Night Football. It will be the Raiders' first primetime matchup. But uh, somebody that Andy Reid needs to look out for is not Josh <laughs> McDaniels. It's Patrick Graham, yeah. who he's faced before, but with the Giants. And right. Can we look and see what, what Patrick Graham might have in store? And again, some of those comments can be easily said you know, for Patrick Graham yeah. and the way he approaches the game. You know, you have a West Coast offense in Andy Reid going against someone like Patrick Graham, who we're not going to put a front on him. He's a multiple guy. It's a situation, whatever. So we're going to show you a little bit here of what he's about. This is the first series of last year's game versus the Giants. And what we see here, look at this. We got two high safety. So right now, Coach Graham is saying, 
Chiefs, you're not throwing the ball deep, yeah. right? Run the ball or throw some kind of screen or something, right? So again, you got a basically a 4-2 up front, make them throw the screen. Most important thing, Amber, rally around the football and tackle. That has to be the model all day long. Once again, look at this, Amber. Here middle of the field, two. middle of the field, hey. Don't throw the ball deep, man. It's a light box, only seven in there. Run the football, so we run, but again, we're showing tackling. Now, the field has been taken away. Now we got a 34 defense right here. We didn't change fronts right here, right? So again, you can't go deep, so now it's a more aggressive front. We're really talk, taking gaps, playing two gaps, but again, same concept with the run, attacking gangs type of defense. Now we got an obvious passing situation, third down. We got three guys, we got a linebacker bluffing. Watch this, Amber, this is awesome. Patrick Graham rushing three. We got one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven. That's zone. And me and you, we, we're <laughs> all looking at the quarterback, right? Yeah. So again, look at the quarterback, break on the ball, and if good things happen, Whoop. tips and overthrows. Patrick Good Graham luck. on that one drive, three different fronts, three styles of defense, based on what we've done this year and what he did against the Chiefs last year, I think this is a possibility of what we can see on Monday Night Football. Hey, if they can hold them to 20 points, we'll take that, just <laughs> exactly. like Patrick Graham did in that week yeah. eight game. But take a look, we yeah. have some roster moves uh, that just happened. Albert Wilson now signed to the practice squad. Deep they, threat. They waived Tyron Johnson. Mm -hmm. Blake Martinez, though, oh. signed to the active roster. Yeah. That, speaking of Patrick Graham, he On knows the Giants him. last year, he right, does a, a great job in covering also. Heck of a tackler with Denzel Perriman, unsure if he's gonna play or not, so right. that is a big help. But it is the Raiders going up against the Kansas City Chiefs. A chance to go two and two, get some footing in the AFC West. It is Monday Night Football. It is the Raiders and the Chiefs. We'll be right back here on Raiders Game Day. We'll see you then after the win.